let's get right into it. Now, before I talk about Falcon and Winter Soldier Episode 6, there is spoilers in this discussion for Episode 6, so if you don't want to hear any spoilers whatsoever, if you haven't seen the episode, go ahead, watch the episode, and then come back to this video, and we'll get you all squared away. So, with that out of the way, let's kind of get into it. So, Falcon and Winter Soldier Episode 6, the series finale, or at least they say it'll be the series finale. I have some suspicion that they might make a second season if they don't they'll have to really intertwine it with the rest of the marvel universe because wow there's a lot of things that were i wouldn't say a lot there were a few things that kind of went um unresolved as the series ended up wrapping up so the episode kind of begins where we leave off in episode five episode five ends with the flag smashers kind of making a move on a meeting between prime ministers of different countries trying to figure out what they're going to do with the grc and the settlement camps and basically, it's the uh, conclusion of that conflict where Sam and Bucky have to figure out what exactly to do to save those people. So first off, it opens really, really strongly. It, it opens with Sam basically flying through the building and the meeting that they're having in. And he's got this sweet new costume. It's a white Captain America um, it's got like white trim and blue body Captain America outfit. And I got to tell you, it is absolutely sweet. I'm assuming that that's what was in the box that Bucky gave Sam in the previous episode from the Wakandans. If you remember in a previous episode, Sam or not Sam, Bucky says, Hey, I had to get this for you. And I had to call in a favor to the Wakandans to get it. So I'm assuming that that outfit is what was in the box. And I got to tell you, it looks absolutely sweet. If you guys haven't seen it yet go check it out. It, it It's something to write home about. It's absolutely phenomenal. And something that's kind of interesting, right when we see Sam in that outfit, I don't know if it's right after we see him or just a few minutes after, but they kind of make the proclamation like, hey, that's Captain America, or Sam says, I'm Captain America, which kind of shows full circle that Sam has now grown and transitioned as a character, as a person, to own the Captain America title that uh, he, I would say, refused before by him giving up the shield in the first place. I would say he he refused that Captain America title. I think he used to believe that no other person should take up that mantle, and now we've seen that come full circle, and I think he's changed his mind. And the episode does a really interesting thing where it makes it abundantly clear that Sam is now Captain America. They refer to it, I believe, four or five times throughout the dialogue, and at the very end of the episode in the credits, they retitle it. They normally say the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and at the very end, it now reads Captain America and the Winter Soldier. If you get to the end of the episode, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, but um, I thought this was a really suitable way to kind of wrap up the story, at least in this series or in the season for Sam, because it just shows you like the growth and the change in mindset that he's endured along the way from meeting Isaiah Bradley, from giving up the shield in the first place, from uh, his interactions with John Walker, Carly Morgan thoughts like he's been through quite a bit in this series and it's just made for some really interesting character development. And I think it was very fitting that he ended up becoming and earning the title of uh, Captain America in this case. So that's a really long and winded explanation for only going into like the first five minutes of the episode, but that's just kind of what I thought about it overall. And, and in terms of the rest of the episode, so the episode kind of goes on. It's your classic normal good guys chasing bad guys pursuit pretty much in this episode because the flag smashers are in the middle of attacking these politicians and then Bucky and Sam are trying to save them so they go on and do the thing and in the middle of it Sharon Carter actually ends up showing up and meets Bucky it, there's really no explanation as to why she's there in the first place she just kind of shows up and says hey I'm here to help and she she does exactly what she's there to do which is help Bucky and Sam take down the Flag Smashers, which um, I'm glad we get to see more of Sharon Carter. I think the one thing that I was really bummed about in the series overall is that in the third episode, we get to see Sharon Carter. And I, in my mind, I was like, man, I'm really looking forward to seeing her in more episodes. And we really don't see her th th throughout the rest of the series until episode six, which I'll touch on my thoughts on that a little bit later. But it, it was just good to see her again. She's doing her thing. And it, it, she didn't really stand out in the episode, but I'm just glad that she was there because if she wasn't in, if she was only in one episode in the series, I would have kind of scratched my head like, why introduce her at all? It was, it would just wouldn't have been fitting. I think it would have hurt the series without her in this episode. But anyways, so in the middle of the episode, as well as this pursuit is going on, 
who else comes back but John Walker, this time in his old Captain America suit and the Captain America shield, which he made, which of course isn't made of vibranium. It's just made of whatever metal he probably had around in his shop that he handmade himself. And you can really, really tell throughout the fighting that he engages with the Flag Smashers because by the time the fighting is over, his shield is beat to hell. Like, you can tell it, it's not made of the world's strongest metal. It's probably, it could be made of aluminum or steel for all I know. And the Flag Smashers just absolutely annihilate it so it looks like a child's like plaything by the time it's all over so it it was a strange it was a straight it was just an interesting thing overall i don't really have any thoughts about him returning in that episode in general only that it was fitting he's there to get or to i guess make amends or get comeuppance to carly because she in fact killed his best friend lamar in episode four if you haven't seen that episode i thought that was the strongest one in the series but it the, the, there was a really interesting moment between John Walker and Carly Morgenthau in the middle of all this fighting, where um, John he confronts Carly and he says, "Morgenthau, I'm here to basically avenge my friend, for lack of a better word." And she says something really interesting. She was like, "Lamar's she." I'm paraphrasing, of course. I don't remember the exact line, but she says basically, "Lamar's life didn't matter," and you can just see. In John Walker's heart, in his eyes, he's like, you're saying you killed my best friend and his life didn't even matter? And she makes a really interesting point that I didn't expect her to say, which was, his life didn't matter to my cause. So it, she wasn't really saying that his life didn't matter, because obviously that would just be, I think, a little too dark for Carly Morgan, though, as a character. But she's saying, I'm not really here to hurt it's not personal. It's just, I'm here for the cause because there's a greater good that I'm fighting for. It's not just about Lamar. He's basically just collateral damage. And I think I, I, I felt so bad for John Walker in that moment because that's his best friend who he went and fought through four tours, three tours, I think it was with. And she kind of just looks at him as a casualty of war while John looks at him as his life, his best friend, his lifelong friend. And it was just really interesting to see that all kind of come to a head in the grander scheme of things. It's like what people lose may seem very small in the grand scheme of things, but they mean somebody to, they mean a lot to somebody out there somewhere. And I just thought that was kind of eye opening to really see that uh, kind of come to fruition. So a little bit on that introduction there. And then the, the, everything kind of keeps going on. Like I said, I'm kind of like brushing through a lot of the action that really goes on. Cause there is a lot of it in this episode. One thing's for sure. You won't be bored at all because it's a classic Marvel action packed adventure with some really good moments in between the next good in between moment. I think I saw was Carly and three or four other flag smashers that we see throughout the series, like three or four of her friends. I can't remember their names. I don't even think they really mention them very much throughout, but she says that, you know, I'm not really afraid to die. We all have to be prepared to die because the cause can go on without us. The cause does not need their leader, Carly Morgenthau, or the rest of the super soldiers anymore because th they've raised the cause to be big enough in order to have a really good following, which I think they've demonstrated that pretty well in previous episodes, especially at the end of episode five or in, the, in that park. I thought that was an interesting touch overall, but it, there's, you can just tell that the characters are so the I'm sorry Carly Morgenthau seems like she's really the only one who's 100% balls to the wall I'm ready to die for this cause out of the entirety of the Flag Smashers and I think that's where the series falls short in sort of emphasizing how powerful Carly is as a leader and how powerful the cause actually is I never really bought into it honestly throughout the series it's like those other three Flag Smashers that Carly was with who have taken the Super Soldier Serum, when as soon as she talks about death and dying and dying for the cause, they are all kind of like, they all give each other this look like, are you willing to die? I'm not willing to die. You're not, not, not no, we're not willing to die. And then Carly kind of like forces it out of them. She's got to kind of beat out of the word, like beat it out of their, beat their confidence out of them through brute force. And you can just really tell she never really has the fully supported backing that a cause would need in order to really support dying for it, I guess you could say. So it's like, as a leader, I because of moments like that, because there were several of them that happened throughout the series, I never really bought into Carly Morgenthau as a strong leader. 
I think she just got so deep entrenched into this cause and just took her friends along with her. And then now her friends are kind of realizing like, I am not ready or prepared for this. And it, it just really, oh, it really retracted the experience for me for the flag, the flag smashers in general, because it makes them look like a really weak group. And also it really weakens Carly Morgenthau's character because it shows that she's really not a strong enough capable leader to lead a giant cause like that, which I wouldn't be surprised because Carly Morgenthau can't be that old. I mean, they never really allude to her age. I would assume she isn't that old. I don't know if they actually say in the series if what her age is. My my assumption would be like late teens, early 20s would be her character's age, which you're never too young to lead if you're a fantastic leader. You're a fantastic leader. Age is secondary, but for her, I just don't think her as a character, she was portrayed as a strong enough leader to actually, for us as an audience, to buy into the Flag Smashers. So I thought that was a really interesting uh, occurrence that happened in the episode overall as well. So kind of jumping a little bit later into the episode, there's a moment where Carly and the Flag Smashers get separated. They're running away from Sam, Bucky, and now John Walker, because now John Walker's obviously in the fight. And also, don't forget Sharon Card in the background as well. And the Flag Smashers split up, and then, of course, Sam and Bucky and John Walker go in their different directions. Bucky and John go in one, and then Sam pursues Carly, which only makes a ton of sense, right? Because throughout the epi- the, throughout the series, Sam is the one who's probably the most qualified and has demonstrated that he is definitely the most qualified to talk Carly down because he believes that they're still good in Carly and that he can help her because that's what Sam do- does. That's what he's always done in the MCU. So the next most interesting moment is Carly is running away from Sam. Sam can't find her. Well, who does Carly run into but Sharon Carter and basically in this moment, Sharon Carter reveals that she's the power broker. She's been the power broker all along, which me as a fan, I'm not really too surprised at all that she was the power broker. In fact, in episode midway through episode four, I'm kind of like Sharon Carter's literally the only person that would plausibly be the power broker. I couldn't think of anybody else introduced throughout the entire series that would in fact be the power broker. So it it was a big reveal, but it didn't have the impact that it did because it's like, it, it, for me personally, I could kind of connect the dots and be like, well, it's got to be Sharon. She's got to be the power broker. So it was, it was a really, to me, like a lackluster reveal, but it was a reveal nonetheless. So as fans th- for the series winding down, we got that closure, which is great because if we hadn't found out who the power broker definitively was, that would have been a hole in the series. I think that would have been uh, left for the imagination. I just don't think it would have been appropriate. So Sharon Carter is the power broker. She's been kind of pulling the strings the entire time. She hired the uh, French hitman, essentially, to spy on Carly. If you guys don't remember who that is, Sam fights him at the very beginning of episode six and also fought uh, Steve Rogers, Captain America, and I believe it was uh, Civil War. It was the Winter Soldier. I can't remember which it was. I think it was the Winter Soldier in this case, but... um, so that big reveal kind of happens. You find out that that guy was just there to spy on Carly the entire time. Obviously, Carly's pretty heartbroken. And now we've basically got a three-gun standoff. Sharon's pointing at the uh, Sharon's pointing at Carly. Carly's pointing at her. Assassin's pointing at Carly. Everybody's pointing guns at each other. And basically, at this point, no one knows now besides the hitman that she hired and Carly that Sharon is, in fact the power broker at this point nobody else knows not sam not bucky no one else in the world knows so in order to kind of save that face she ends up shooting the assassin or i'm trying to remember how exactly this went down assassin shoots carly sharon shoots assassin everybody gets shot basically (laughs) in this standoff and the only one who lives through it is sharon she takes the shot to her left ribs and she lives and she was able to keep her secret because right after that standoff sam of course conveniently comes running in he sees um uh carly on the ground she's dying she her dying words were i'm sorry so obviously she felt guilty about the things she did the people she killed and she that's that's the end of carly morgenthau and to me that's really the end of the flag smashers because that there's their leader, but who knows? We'll have to see in future series and episodes and movies in the MCU how that all kind of goes down. But the point is, Carly's character comes to an end. She passes, and Sharon gets to keep her secret that she's the power broker because the only two people in the entire series that knew that she was the power broker are now dead. So 
she's she's off free and clear at this point, and then she gets to kind of save face with Sam, Bucky, and everybody else. So they still look at Sharon as the Sharon that they knew in Winter Soldier and also Civil War, but they don't know her for who she is, which is the power broker. And it, it, the show never really... The show does a good job of making her intentions clear that she is there to retain her power and keep craving it and keep... Um, basically control of i guess the underworld for lack of a better term and so i'm curious to see what she's going to do in future movies and series and episodes maybe she'll become a villain but that's kind of how that all plays out um and at the end of the day everybody gets saved all the senators are saved and one thing i want to touch on as this the episode kind of winds down is sam poses he rests after the all of the politicians are rescued he poses the these questions to these politicians like basically like what's wrong with you all of these billions of people are were gone for five years and you're not doing the appropriate things to help them so he kind of cha- he says i'm paraphrasing he basically says do what you must do to help these people i saved your asses today but you guys have to learn to do the right thing to help these people if we're going to go ahead and keep protecting this world because it has to be a world worth protecting like i said i'm totally paraphrasing i can't remember everything that sam said because the episode spends a good four or five minutes on him just portraying that message to the those leaders and i think the message almost went on a little bit too long because i kind of got lost in it but it was powerful nonetheless and then the next thing that sam does before the episode winds up and to me this was probably one of the most powerful moments in the series and i'm glad that they added this in was The fact that he went to see Isaiah Bradley one more time to show him something, essentially. And he brings him to the Captain America Museum. And lo and behold, there is an entire exhibit dedicated to Isaiah Bradley and his mission when he had to pursue the Winter Soldier. And in the words of Sam, he says, now America will never forget what you did for them. And Isaiah is just breaking down. He's in tears. And I thought that was super, super fitting that and it really rounded off not only isaiah's character but also it further rounds off sam a lot more like i said earlier this episode really and i'd say now that the series really revolves around sam's character growth for the most part because we've had so much of everybody else in the mcu in the past but it shows that sam is now ready to always do what he thinks is right always do the right thing and in the words of peggy carter you know even in times when people say move and you know you're doing the right thing you say no you move like you you, you stick with your guns do the right thing doing the right thing is always doing the right thing and that's something that steve always strived for and that's a quality that sam possesses and he is going to carry that with him now as captain america so he does all the right things he saves all the people he challenges the people who have done wrong and know that they can do better and he also uplifts people who might have been wronged in the past so overall like i said this is a really big catharsis and roundup for sam's story which i thought was a really really nice touch so um then as the episode kind of wraps up a little bit more there's a few more um strings that still have yet to be kind of connected one what's going to happen with john walker and two what about bucky like the, the the one thing that really bugged me about this episode and actually the series in general is that I could have used a lot more time with Bucky and him making amends for his him being the Winter Soldier. How does he deal with um, his old man friend? I can't remember what his friend's name was off the top of my head, but like, how does that wrap up? And they really don't touch on it till literally like the last four or five minutes of the episode. And when they do, it's just it's very brief, and it's like. I, I, I like me as a fan. I was waiting for the entire series for Bucky to really make amends for those things and really feel feel his emotions and see that growth and the pain and what it's like to come face to face with your your demons from your past like from a mental health perspective i just think that's so powerful especially the world in the pandemic that we lived on i just thought that could have been a really valuable message in addition to the other messages that were portrayed in the show so far so it's not that they didn't touch on it at all it's just i don't think they touched on it enough is what I'm trying to say. So basically, I'll cut to the chase. What Beck, what Bucky did at the end of the episode is he finally confronts his friend. He goes to his apartment. And he says, I have something to tell you about your son. He tells him. Ba- basically, and th- this all takes place within like a, the course of maybe 30, 40 seconds. It felt like he says, I'm the Winter Soldier. I killed your son. I didn't have a choice. And then like that's that. He pretty much 
leaves his friend behind for what it seems like forever because it seems like Bucky has now moved on. He's made amends for all the things that he's done. It's just the the episode just kind of glosses over it, and it's like, oh, man, there there could have just been so much more opportunity there for us as fans to really feel that catharsis for Bucky and to see Bucky go through that and make amends, like I've said like two or three times already. And it I, it's just the show really missed the mark for me. And that, and it, and to me, it, I enjoyed the episode overall, but that really, really hurt. And it really kind of hurt my outlook on the series in general, but I'll talk about that in just a minute. Moving on next to John Walker. So in the previous episode, in episode five, John Walker gets introduced to this person, this woman. I don't know who she is. And the series doesn't talk about really at all who she is. Besides, she has a card that has nothing on it and she's really mysterious and she meets up with John Walker and his wife. I can't remember her name either, but he tries on a suit that's like Captain America, but it's in instead of blue, it's in black. And then she calls him the U.S. agent. And it's like, what does this really mean for John Walker? You know, before it just felt really out of place. And even the introduction of that character that's helping John seemed really out of place. It's like they introduced her at the very beginning of episode five. And then they just briefly throw her in there at the end of episode six. It didn't make a ton of sense to me. And I think that it didn't really retract from my feelings of the episode, but it just begged the question, why is she there? And I don't think we'll get that, that answer until future MCU projects. So it was really interesting. So I think what it all really means is there is more for John Walker in the story. I just don't know what that is yet. And the series didn't really do a great job of showing us what that is besides that he's the U S agent. And now he's got some really mysterious lady behind him. So take that for what it's worth. We'll have to see what happens to him in the future. And then finally, at the very, very end of the episode, to kind of wrap it up here before I give you my thoughts on the entire series, Sharon Carter gets her pardon from the U.S. government. Sam tells her, hey, I'm keeping my promise. I'm going to get you a full pardon. And he fulfills on his promise. The politicians of America give her the pardon, and they even say, hey, there might even be an opening in your old division because her old job, she worked for S.H.I.E.L.D., which I think is now S.W.O.R.D., if I'm not mistaken, given WandaVision, but she says it would be my honor to go back to that. So again, Sam's being the the great good man that he is and being Captain America. And it, it, at the very end of the episode, Sharon says she puts him to call. She says, hey, we now have access to all of the U.S. military secrets, hoo-ha, whatever. And it's like, okay, so now... Sharon gets to keep her secret that she's the power broker. She's now got a position of power in another government that she can exploit. And she's go. it sounds like she's going to do so in the future. And the episode, the series, because this is in the post credit scene, kind of just leaves it at that. So it leaves it off more as a mystery. So there's quite a few mysteries that are left at the end between John Walker and Sharon Carter. And I guess if they do make another uh, season or seasons of Captain America and Winter Soldier, um, I'm sure they'll pursue that further. I don't know if they will or not, or maybe they'll pursue them in the greater MCU projects and movies coming up, which I just don't know how they interweave John Walker as U.S. agent and Sharon Carter as a member of um, S.W.O.R.D. now into the greater MCU universe because it's like, okay, I feel like we've seen both of those enemy types before. It's like Sharon Carter is the the mole in the system it's like well that was pretty much all of shield at one point with hydra it's like are we really gonna see that again with her as the power broker it just seems like i hope they don't really pursue that too much because it seems like the old same the same song and dance that we've seen before and to me that would just really kind of leave a sour taste in my mouth like yawn but i mean who knows time will tell and we'll get there when we get there so that was pretty much the full breakdown of episode six and what i thought were the implications sorry if i jumped around a little bit but what were my overall thoughts in the episode i enjoyed the episode i thought it was a suitable wrap up for the season or the series or whatever it might be and it had a lot of action if you're an mcu fan that's looking for action you'll enjoy it if you're looking for the wrap up of these characters you'll enjoy it for some maybe not love it for others but at the end of the day i i enjoyed it the series overall, though, now, how did I feel about the series? I think that the series could have used two more episodes between episodes four and five. And I also think it could have used two more episodes between five and six. I know that I, I'm guessing that the production of the show had to get kind of halted because COVID-19, all the shooting in the pandemic, like it happens. I totally get it. 
it's just without more context to the series, I, I just think there's so much more story to tell. It's like there's more story to tell with Sharon as the power broker, Madripoor in general, even Bucky, who is one of the main characters of the show. I feel like they missed so much of that. Um, the, f- the more of the flag smashers, I wouldn't have minded seeing them, but then again, their development as an entire group, I thought was pretty weak throughout the series and I never really bought into it with more episodes. Maybe I would have bought into it more. And also I really wanted to see the, the series really peaked for me at the end of episode four, when John Walker kills that flag smasher with the shield, we really don't get, I think enough, enough information and fallout and implications from that after that episode like we see the personal price that john has to pay but i and i felt it to a certain extent but i just i would have loved to have seen more of it i guess you could say between episodes four and five and then also more of the development even from sam and bucky between five and six like i think just more episodes could have been added to this in general and even to baron zemo's character i would have loved to have seen more of baron zemo because daniel rule absolutely crushed it when he was in this series, like every single second he was on the screen, it's like him, Bucky and Sam were a trio and he really rounded it off quite nicely. And I feel bad because I totally forgot to touch on Baron Zemo in the episode. So another post-grad scene, if I'm not mistaken, at the very end of the episode, the flag smashers are taken prisoner. They live through the ordeal. They get transported through an armored truck, which ends up exploding and all of them die. So some of the super soldiers that were flag smashers end up dying and we get a little um, cut scene of Baron Zemo's right hand man. I don't want to call him his maybe his butler for lack of a better term with a smile on his face and just sitting in the car leaving us to believe, OK, he planted a bomb that killed those super soldiers. And then Baron Zemo is just sitting on the raft, which is the prison that they introduced in Civil War, hearing that radio announcement that, hey, the flag sma- or flag smashers who were super soldiers were killed and then Baron Zemo's like ah inner peace I love to hear it when another super soldier dies and that kind of really wraps up his character too and to me it was satisfying it was satisfying enough for the series but it wasn't satisfying in the grand scheme of things as a whole like I really wanted to see more of Baron Zemo overall throughout the series and i think the series would have very much more benefited from it and it it would have been even better because daniel really added a lot to it with baron zemo's character but the one thing with baron zemo being on the raft i never quite understood the wakandan bucky gave him to the wakandans in episode five and i swear they said they were going to take him to a wakandan prison but they take him to the raft which to me isn't a wakandan prison so there's a little bit of a disconnect for me there Maybe that's a nitpick. Maybe they said he, they were taking him to the raft in episode five, and I just didn't quite hear them, but I just thought that was a little strange. So um, what el- how else did I fear about the series overall? I thought it was a really good series. I really enjoyed seeing more of Sam. We get the most of Sam in the entire series, see him grow and develop. We don't get enough of some characters that I would have liked to have seen. Bucky, Sharon, Baron Zemo, John Walker. I'm kind of like... They give enough to John Walker where I'm satisfied. I didn't really find John Walker super, super interesting as a character overall. So I was fine with what they gave us. Um, I'm trying to think of other thoughts I had on the series as a whole. Overall, I'd say it was a really good series. I really look forward to watching it each and every week. The highlight for me of the entire series was episode four. The weakest episode... I'm going to say maybe episode two for me was a little weak. I even really, and don't get me wrong, I think I enjoyed every single episode I watched for being my favorite. I think if I had to pick one that I least enjoyed, it's a tie between two and the finale. It, it, it's just, there's something between those two episodes that didn't really quite peg with me. And even episode one, it was more introduction into things. And it was fascinating enough because of the dynamic that they introduced with Bucky and, and him tackling and making amends with his mental health, which I thought was a really powerful message as well. And one thing I really did like about the series is that it courageously has done something that I haven't really noticed MCU projects take on before. Maybe I'm just blind and a little ignorant to that, but they took on some social justice I- issues that I haven't seen them do before. And I thought it was really courageous and fitting, and I thought it was just a really cool addition to the series. So overall, I think the series was pretty great. Um, the way they wrap it up, I... I, I have to believe they're going to make a second season with some of the strings that they left unattached by the, everything was said and done, or maybe they'll take care of it in other MCU projects, but I wouldn't be surprised if they made another episode or another season of 
Captain America and the Winter Soldier, or if I wonder if they'll change it to Captain America and the Winter Soldier from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, because now the Falcon or Sam is Captain America. So I guess we'll have to see. But ladies and gentlemen, what do you guys think of Episode Six? What do you think of the series overall? Whatever you thought about it, feel free to comment below and let me know what your thoughts were. All right, so. With the Falcon and Winter Soldier stuff down and out of the way, and I'm sorry that took up a really big chunk of this episode, let's get into the next topic, which is going to be the Resident Evil v- 